It's a time for a package from China. Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video, we are going to take a close look at the XGO, the D20. It's also known as the Xbox Series X Mini. And this thing, I must say, they nailed it when it comes to the box itself. They did nail absolutely the presentation and how everything has been packed up. What is also completely messed up, they're giving you freaking PlayStation controls with an Xbox Mini device. So the overall quality is absolutely cheap, not like the cheap to the cheap cheap ones. We do have rubberized like, joysticks, the D-pad feels quite nice and also the same for the buttons. We're going to get two controllers, both of the same quality. At the back we're going to get it, but they absolutely nailed it when it comes to the device itself. So the device looks great. This is a very cool fun novelty just to have in your collection to just display it at all. Even if this thing has horrible emulation. Here having an extra button, the mode and the game and a volume control that even has a micro switch beneath it. Then having over here the LED, at the bottom we're going to get a very thick, very nice quality rubber, so giving it a very nice grip. We do have like a nice, very good weight to it and I think that is the reason because there isn't speaker at the bottom. Over here we're having line-in Type-C for the input for the power supply. There needs to be an option or there is a need, a need to, there is a somewhere an SD card, but there is not an SD card in here, so we can add that HDMI and two USB ports. Okay, to begin with, when it comes to power supplies, you need to get yourself a good one. For example, I've used the double port USB over here. In total, we're going to get 2.4 amps, but it was not enough. I'm getting myself like the big boy. If you don't use a right power supply, you're not going to get it booted up. You're just going to get yourself the logo of the, let's say, game system. You can listen to music, but that's it. But to my surprise, this thing is actually a Bluetooth speaker. The thing that we need to do is powering on by holding the bottom button for a couple of seconds. And there we go. The box itself mentioned that we do have like this beautiful, let's say, breathing lamp. And in other words, it's just fading in, fading out all the time. Let's see if it's going to be connecting. There we go. Yep. Oh yeah. And now we can listen to some music through the... Xbox Mini. So this is actually what we're going to get in the menu itself. It's a little bit messy, but I did notice that the responsiveness of the menu is very fast and I really like it. We're going to get class, history, collection and the search. That's basically what we're going to get. So the first thing I just wanted to check out how fast the search function will work. With, let's put in Sonic for fun, just to see how actually good it works. Yeah, so this, oh man, look at this. I'm putting in Sonic, but I'm getting all kinds of different game titles. So the search results, it's great that it is in there, but it searches, um, I don't know what it searches for, because it doesn't search Sonic games. But the class is also kind of weird, because there is no, let's say, different kind of, let's say, system that we can search through. It's completely one big mess when it comes to the menu. I've been scrolling through the list itself and there are a lot of double games on here. There's the stuff they're always doing. We do have like different kind of platforms. Think about the Game Boy is here and other things. Okay, a great example that we're having a certain main game. There are basically three of them on here. But let's get into the gaming. By the way, I am using the audio from the speaker itself or the game system speaker. Because we don't have any HDMI output. But it's quite unfortunate when it comes to this device. There are a lot of missed opportunities. Because the overall experience when it comes to the emulation is not bad at all. When pressing L1 in the main menu, that will bring you to the system settings. I was hoping to get more options when it comes to TV out. But there, we don't go to find anything at all. We're only having language, view local files, or that's it. Factory reset that I would really recommend doing and then having exit settings. That's it. Pressing select and start at the same time when you're in the game, you're going to get yourself a very nice looking menu. To begin with, we're going to get save loads and save states. So I think it's very convenient. And also we have the option to change out the XPS ratio in full screen and 4x3. So that's something I just check out and even the controls can be swapped out if you have problems. So let's get into the game. And then you can see it works as a charm when it comes to the XPS ratio. The only thing is, is the volume. 
because we need to switch the volume to the freaking speaker. There is no way getting audio from the HDMI output. But how does it actually work? We do have two buttons at the front I already mentioned before. Pressing the first one over here will bring you in the Bluetooth functionality that we have tested. Pressing the game, then we're switching to the game. The overall quality of the audio is not bad at all. We haven't already seen it when it comes to the Bluetooth speaker functionalities. It's kind of cool. Also the emulation for MAME, so far I can see it runs pretty damn good. The analog stick and the D-pad, everything works as a charm. Let's just some more MAME games. I just wanted to double check the audio settings. And don't hear the weird stuff that we've seen and hear when it comes to Pandora's boxes. Let's move on to the NES part. And actually, let's see how it runs. So far, so good. No problem whatsoever. Let's go to the screen settings. Let's set it to 4x3. Resume. And there we go. Let's move on to Super NES. But also, so far, I can see it works just fine. The weird thing is that I only can set the screen resolution. You cannot mess around with the pixels or filters whatsoever. So let's try another Super NES game just to be safe. That I know for sure that everything seems to be running fine. I just wanted to try a random game. Let's move on to the Mega Drive part. And I can't even tell you the list it's absolutely one big gigantic mess. The naming are completely wrong. It's just a freaking nightmare. And some of the games are not even in freaking English. There was already a save on here, so it seems to be that the GBA games does have the option to make a save. So that's pretty cool. Let's check out how the screen settings will work when we're going to put it on 4x3. But so far, that's kind of cool. We have an option to make a quick load, quick save, and we can adjust the express ratio a little bit. And don't see any weird filtering going on. Just wanted to check out another GBA game, a very fast game. Just check out how it is with the screen tearing. But also, they completely like nailed it when it comes to this part. So let's look into the Game Boy Classic, and it's going to be another level. I'm curious how the 4x3 will look. For the final test, I can say that with PlayStation 1 is going to be the most demanding system on here. I do wonder also what happens when we're going to put screen setting of 4x3. Okay, yeah, that looks completely messed up. There's no audio, or at least music at the background. All the buttons seem to be working fine. Let's try another attempt to the expert ratio. Ah, there we go. So it was just like a minor flaw. So also the expert ratio seems to be working fine, only you need to give it a couple of the attempts. And if you want to have a system like this for Atari, I've noticed there are only like a handful of games, so it's absolutely misleading. Okay, that seems to be working fine. Okay, so let's check out if we can change out the express ratio. There we go. Oh man. Careful. If I have enough patience, there we go. I'm really curious how we can just crack it open. I just wanted to see how the construction is of this thing because it looks kind of cool. Oh, that is interesting. Oh, and also naughty at the same time. But in total, we're four parkers holding this thing down. It's quite an interesting construction. Simply because when you're looking at it, it's a very tiny speaker inside an extra enclosure. So this tiny thing is actually where all the magic happens. 
This is a freaking main board. How tiny can it be? Over here is the one that all the magic happens. And basically this is the rock chip over here. It is also called the RK3036G. And I'm quite surprised to see this because I didn't see this chip so far no, before on one of those main boards. It's an interesting construction and of course it comes with one gigantic capacitor. And the way how they constructed this is quite genius because the product itself is quite genius. You have like a Bluetooth speaker combined with a game system. But in the end, when you're looking at it, it's such a missed opportunity. I already mentioned before, and maybe a couple of times in this video, there are so many cool things to it. But yeah, I think it's going to be a fun novelty. The biggest downside of this, in my opinion, is the game list and the category. It's one big mess. And yeah, you can add some new stuff to it if you want to. But the general, let's say, overall experience was not that great. Besides that, it's a very fast loading times. Everything works great with good emulation, but they drop the ball when it comes to these minor things. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing, and it would be great to see you in the next video.